Hello everyone and welcome to another China admissions video. Our topic is travel essentials and what you need when you arrive in China. We have a couple of different categories here. I myself have been a student in China and some of these come from my own personal mistakes. Um, so I really wish that I had a video like this when I was preparing to go to China and that wasn't that long ago. So I hope this really helps you guys. And if there are any further tips from any other people that have gone there and they would like to add some tips, please leave them down below in the comments. Or if you have any further questions, also just leave them down below in the comments. So the first thing you're going to need is a suitcase. Most of us are going to need to book a very long flight to get to China. For me in general, it took about 20 hours to get there, including a layover of about two to four hours. So that's a whole day's journey. And oftentimes you'll often go for the cheapest flight deal. So just make sure when you are booking your flight that you know exactly what your baggage allowance is. Sometimes certain flights are cheaper because they don't offer a lot of baggage or they might not even offer a checked baggage. So just check to see what is actually allowed. Some airlines will allow you to take a 32 kilogram suitcase and others will only allow a 20 kilogram suitcase. Some airlines allow two 20 kilogram suitcases. So just make sure to see exactly what is allowed and also do you really need to take that much luggage in the first place? So my biggest mistake that I made is I had a really big baggage allowance. I had a 32 kilogram baggage allowance um, and I had to go for a year, for the first year, and I was under the impression that I should just bring as many, many, many clothes as possible. Don't do that. Just bring a couple of things that you're going to need. Um, maybe bring some winter clothes and some summer clothes, um, but don't overpack because remember, you're going to have a washing machine over there. You're going to be able to do laundry. So in general, you can get away with having uh, a little less. And also just remember, you're going to get clothes while you're there. Buying clothes in China is very cheap, especially when you're shopping online. So very often you're going to be buying extra things over there. So there really isn't that much of a need to bring so many things with you. In general, what I recommend is if you have a very large suitcase, um, make sure that it's very high quality if it's a hard case suitcase. Otherwise, they do tend to throw them when they're in the airplane and loading up the airplane. And those hard case suitcases, um, if they're uh, cheaper ones, they tend to break very easily. Uh, and that could also cause the things inside of your bag to break. So in general, I would recommend to get a soft case suitcase. Um, you'll be able to keep it from breaking for a bit longer then. Another thing you need to consider is your clothing and personal items. So China is a very, very large country and there are different types of weather depending on where you go. If you go to the north of China, you might have four different seasons, but you're definitely going to have snow in the winter and you're going to have very hot summers as well. So you need a lot of variety. You need to pack for snow specifically. Um, and if you are someone that has never actually lived in an area that where it snows, that can be quite difficult for you to do. If you're like me and you go to the south of China, then you need to know that it's going to be hot for most of the year. Uh, it's going to be cold for a very short amount of time. So that means you don't really need to bring that many winter clothes and you're definitely not going to be experiencing snow. You're definitely going to have a lot of monsoons. So definitely bring your raincoats and stuff like that. And also, it doesn't matter where you go in China, you are going to need very comfortable walking shoes. That's something that I had to learn when I got there. I had sandals that I used to wear a lot in South Africa. That's what a lot of people will wear there. However, we don't walk as much as people do in China. So you're going to be walking a lot, a lot, a lot. Even though there's a lot of public transportation, you are still very, very easily, you will reach 10,000 steps a day. So I recommend getting a very comfortable, high quality pair of shoes or sneakers that you can wear. When you are packing, just remember with your toiletries, so these are your liquids, maybe it's your face wash, some makeup, body wash, shampoo, conditioner, etc. If you are checking them into your checked luggage so that you won't have any restrictions um, as to how many things you can actually put in there. Uh, same with deodorants, you can put deodorants in there and that's not going to be an issue. If you're taking it with you on the plane in your carry-on, you are not allowed to have more than 100 milliliters um, of any liquids in there. So that's a mistake that I often made. I would often put my deodorant um, in my carry-on since I thought that I would need it during my journey. And of course you can't take, de take deodorant on. So oftentimes it would get thrown out during security. And that's a lot of money wasted. So don't do that. Some of you might have certain medications. I remember I was on a skincare medication and just make sure that you actually can get a good supply of your prescription medication uh, to take with you. So I had to be gone for a year, so I was able to get a year's worth of my prescription medication. So in those kinds of circumstances, you can do that. So if there's something that you're not exactly sure if you can get it over there, just make sure to get enough 
um, and take it with you. The next one is documentation and finances. So you obviously are going to need a visa, a study visa to go to China and just make sure that you have copies of your passport and the information uh, side of your passport then also your visa inside of your passport. Make sure you have the digital copies on your email or on your Gmail, on your phone, a screenshot of them, um, and also carry paper copies as well. So the reason why we say this is in some circumstances, you might lose your passport. And if you lose your passport, you are no longer, you no longer have identification. So having a copy will allow you to contact your nearest country embassy um, and be able to get into the process of applying for a new passport or figuring out what the next steps are. So bank accounts and cards are next in this. So um, you need to inform your bank that you are going to be leaving the country and you need to inform them exactly which country you're going to. So you need to tell them you are going to China and you're going there for study reasons. And that is because if you use your card then in an ATM in China to withdraw money, um, a lot of banks will see that as a red flag if you have not let them know about that. So they assume that it might have gotten stolen and that means that your card will get blocked and now you no longer are able to use that card. So just make sure to contact your bank about that. Also, before you go to China, make sure to have some cash on you in Chinese RMB. So make sure to carry that on you just in case you aren't able to use your card or have access to an ATM um, immediately when you're there, if you need to use a taxi to get to the university, etc. So just make sure that you do have cash on you. I recommend having about 200 to 300 RMB on you um, just for you to make sure that you can get to the university and maybe get some food and figure out where the ATM machine is then. Once you are at the university, you will be able to apply for a student bank card and the university often helps you to set that up, but you might need to just have some cash on you before that happens. Another one, which is a big mistake that I made, is you need to look into your electronics and your adapters. So depending on where you live in the world, uh, your adapters and the way that your charger looks um, in certain countries, they're going to be very different. What I recommend is to take a look at what your plugs look like and take a look at what the plugs look like in China and see if they're similar. Oftentimes they're not. So you can get a universal adapter then. Another thing that I would recommend is to get a, a charging pack or a battery pack that you can take with you during your journey. Um, you might not be able to charge your phone on the plane or in the airport for some reason. Usually you can, but for some reason, just in case you can't, you will have a battery pack and you'll be able to charge it in case of an emergency. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to be prepared to adapt to Chinese culture. I knew that I was going to China. However, when I landed at the airport and I looked around and I saw that everything was in Chinese, I truly did. I did have culture shock. I knew that this was going to happen and it surprised me how surprised I was, how overwhelmed I was. And also you might be really tired and jet lagged and not be able to understand things or feel very, very frustrated. So just understand that this is going to happen and you are going to feel that amount of culture shock. So if you can arrange for someone to pick you up and to help you with that, um, you can do that. However, what I do recommend is to download the app Pleco. So Pleco is what a lot of foreign people use. It's a way to really help you get around um, as you are able to draw the characters that you are seeing um, and figure out what it is. You're able to take pictures of the characters and it shows you what it means. Um, you're able to type the pinyin and see what characters they are or type the characters and see what the word means. So it's a really, really good way of um, being able to understand what the characters mean um, and it will definitely help you to get around. I also recommend getting Baidu and Baidu Translate as this will also uh, give you a very accurate way of um, translating between uh, Chinese people if you have no level of Chinese yet. Our last category is travel and exploration. So you might want to bring certain travel accessories. I recommend having a sturdy backpack that you can carry with you and then also a reusable water bottle. A lot of airports have um, places where you can get free drinking water, cold and hot. So if you like, some people like to drink hot water so you can bring a flask um, or you can if you just prefer cold water just have an empty reusable water bottle because obviously going through security you can't have any liquids with you so you'll have to throw out that water if you've got water with you but if you have an empty water bottle then you'll be able to fill it up for free later on um, and you can even do that within the plane as well um, because oftentimes having to buy water can be really expensive um, and it's something that you're definitely going to get thirsty on if, especially if you're going to be on a, a plane for 
two long 10 hour flights. So definitely make sure to do that to make sure to have a travel adapter and again, a portable charger or charging pack. The next thing that's very important is travel insurance. So the university is going to require you to buy the student insurance that they give to all the students and that's going to last for your entire semester and you'll renew that every semester. It covers most of the issues that you might have while you are there. So I wouldn't worry about being covered while you are uh, just after you have registered since you will have that. But I recommend to get a, a short term travel insurance from when you leave your country and your trip to China and until you've registered at the university. You might be arriving two days earlier. Just make sure that you get that in case anything happens during that short period of time um, and then you can cancel it after that. I hope this has helped you guys with your packing journey and knowing exactly what you need to pack. Um, I will see you guys in the next video.